Shakespeare may not have thought much of Jesus calling his chief disciple rock. In Julius Caesar, Marullus berates the people of Rome, you blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things. That's one way of looking at Simon's nickname. By calling him Peter, rock, is Jesus saying that the man is as sharp as a bowling ball? The Gospels do not portray Peter as the brightest of the disciples. The old Rocky movies give another possibility for understanding Peter's nickname. Is Simon the strong man who will overcome though all the odds are against him? Swinging his sword at Gethsemane certainly shows that he was ready for a brawl. Might Simon be rock-like in stubbornness? unwilling or unable to be moved by argument or common sense. That might be, though St. Paul once opposed him to his face for being wishy-washy. Or might Jesus have called him rock because he was dependable, committed, steady in the face of opposition? But then there was that shameful business of denying Jesus during this trial. Another possibility is that Simon was seen by Jesus as strong enough to provide support for others, a rock-solid foundation. That is certainly implied in what Jesus says after the naming, on this rock I will build my church. The Gospel says that Jesus chose to build his church on Peter the rock. Did Jesus decide to do so because of Peter's rockness? Might it not be the other way around? Is the church built on Peter because he is the rock? Or is he the rock because the Lord chose to build the church on him? The answer is important for us because in a sense, the church is built upon each of us. So must we be rock-like in order to be good Christians? If to be a Christian requires that I be a rock, there are indeed some ways in which the description fits. Certainly, we can be capable of gross stupidity, blocks, stones, and worse than senseless things. Yet, like Peter, we're capable also of being the recipients of God's inspiration. We can be like Simon Peter in being rambunctious, ready to rush off on behalf of the Lord, but disappointed and fearful when the battle against our own sin and the sin of the world gets to be difficult. On the other hand, we can be stubborn in holding to the customs of faith, but too willing to compromise with the world when it comes to the actual living of that faith. Am I rock-like in steadiness? Well, sort of. But I worry too much about fitting in. My friendships, my position in society, even my livelihood depend upon not being too different, especially in the ways that faith calls me to be different. A rock of support, then? Sometimes. But I prefer to support others at my convenience rather than at their need. I have commitments of my own that are more important to me. Perhaps most appropriate would be the image of rock bottom, as low as one can go. All in all, neither I nor my fellow Christians are all that impressive. If Jesus had nicknamed Simon Gelatin, that might have been more accurate, not only of him, but also of us. The church built upon him as foundation. Somewhat firm, but wobbly. Is it sufficient to be gelatin rather than rock? The Lord seems to think so. In the case of Simon Peter, Christ's decision to build the church upon him turned him into a rock foundation. Simon, who denied the Lord, Simon, who ran away at the final test of the cross, became Peter, the leader of the disciples and martyr for Christ. The key to Simon's shift from gelatin to rock is his admission that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That admission did not turn him into rock, but was all Jesus needed to declare that he would suffice as a foundation. Is my weak faith gelatinous enough for Jesus to declare the same of me? It probably is. I say that Jesus is the Lord, 
and he makes me a foundation for the building up of the church. Does that mean I will never again waver, quaver? Of course not. Peter shook many times even after being renamed Rock. The important thing about Peter, and the important thing about me, is that Christ has chosen us to be church. He has set us up in all our weakness and declared that the gates of death will not prevail against us.